is uh, uh, about uh, sharing the like this presentation is all about sharing my experience on working on one of the projects uh, while working with the client we tried out some innovative thing uh, of not using story point and, and using uh, story count uh, to track our project progress as well as to track velocity uh, and then in general asking this question uh, if that works should we just start thinking in terms of whether we should continue using story points or should we use something else like what I what we did uh, of using a count of stories completed in an iteration. Is it better now? audible okay cool so uh, in in most of the agile projects uh, the typical scenario is like this uh, you ask development team uh, to get the estimate uh, for the backlog for the product backlog uh, what happens the development team goes into a room uh, comes up with uh, puts some number uh, on all the stories in the backlog and then comes out after like two or three hours comes out with the estimate for all the story cards uh, they hand it over to the product uh, project manager or to delivery manager then who then spend some time coming up with a burn up and burn down chart so that they can track this going forward. Uh, uh, when they do this estimation uh, I have seen issues where like people tend to put they have this hidden pressure from the management that uh, don't put higher estimate. Uh, we need something to be quick urgent and then you tend, tend up you probably end up putting estimates uh, lesser than what what is the actual estimate for that particular story. Uh, so uh, what happens is when you start you realize that the estimates were wrong and then there is a sudden pressure when a one some story is taking longer time the managers start putting pressure on the development team why this story is taking longer time. Uh, so all, I faced this issue in the past uh, most of my team members who worked on this project faced this issue in the past. So uh, we were thinking why we estimate. And, and we got this answer. So why we estimate? Because we want to track velocity, we want to decide scope, how much we can pick up in an iteration and also to help prioritize stories for the product manager so that product manager can prioritize stories for the iteration. And eventually it will also help in planning some releases. But is that the case? What happens? In reality, you, will, you must have seen this situation like the estimation takes so much time and effort. Uh, I have seen situations where people spend days and one and one or two days in just estimating product backlog. Uh, then there is a tendency between the project, uh, project managers and the delivery managers to relate these story points into number of days and then asking developers, okay, one point of story, why is it not done in two days? Why is it not, on, not done in three days? Uh, in some cases, it's like, a, it's like a deadline. You said it's one pointer and it's been, it's been four days now. It should have been done in like two days. Uh, what, it hap what happens is there is a lack of confidence in the development team uh, when you see that uh, one, some smaller story is taking more time and, and, and we, see, we saw that happening in the past projects. So we thought uh, how can we avoid this? Can we do something? And we looked at uh, some of the claims that justify use of story points. Uh, if you have seen that book, User Stories Applied in MyCon, uh, you have seen these claims. So the first claim says, why the story point is allows us to change our mind whenever we have more information about the story. Okay, uh, so what does that mean? That means like if we have more, inf if we get some additional information about a story uh, and if it's a small change, we can definitely accommodate that in the same story. But if you see that it's a, it's a drastic change or if it's, if it's completely uh, adding a lot of scope into that story, you end up putting more estimate or you end up creating more cards. Uh, but uh, that can be done by, by counting cards as well, right? Like you don't need story point is doesn't tell you that that's the only better approach for for handling this situation. There are there is a uh, so what we did we used story count and it worked well for us. So the second claim which says that the use of story points work both for epics and smaller stories. Well, uh, yes, you can have one pointer story, you can have 12, 10 pointer story, but 10 pointer story like. How does that help? 
does it mean that 10 points is like 1 point or 10 times or does it mean like 10 pointer is like 5 point or 2 times what is it we don't know so what's the value that we are getting by estimating epic so this this claim is itself is false i don't i don't agree with this claim uh, third one it says that the use of story points doesn't take a lot of time well uh, we saw that in the past <coughs> that estimating one or two stories might not take a lot of time but if you end up estimating <coughs> a product backlog you might take uh, probably three hours, four hours, almost a day or more than a day. And this is just a guesstimate. It's not that it's a final number. Uh, I don't understand why people put so much effort and time in, in putting uh, estimate on the story card. And eventually the project priorities change, uh, your scope changes. So even if you estimate like a long running product project backlog, it won't help you. So why, why then use story point for estimation? Uh, the use of story points provides useful information about our project progress and the work remaining. Yes, it does. But then for to do this, you need to estimate <coughs> each and every story in your project backlog. You can't, uh, you can't just have like five stories estimated and then based on that you'll project something. Uh, and, and, and then again, the time take, it takes to estimate this much of, this much of work. Uh, so the, the, the fifth claim, which says the story points is tolerant to imprecision of the estimates. Yes, I, I agree with this. But then it's not the only uh, tool. It's not the only technique that, that helps us. Uh, probably counting story cards will probably do the same thing for us as well. So and then the last claim, which says the use of story points can be used to plan releases. Uh, I guess any estimation technique, whether you use uh, story point or use any other technique, it will help you to plan your releases. It's not that only story point help you to plan your releases. So if, if that's the case, uh, then we, we thought if, if all these claims, it's not saying that story point is the only technique which will allow you to handle all of these cases, then why use story point? Can't we use something else? Uh, so what we did, uh, we were asked to build a mobile application uh, for a uh, for an insurance company so that user can buy car insurance on mobile. Uh, the product owner was very keen to understand how much time, how much effort it will take uh, to build this MVP scope. Uh, we decided to not use story points for estimation. But then what to do? What should we do? If not as no, as no story point, then how can we predict, how can we say that, uh, how many iterations it will take to complete this? <coughs> so we, uh, we wanted some, we knew that, okay, we wanted something simple, something which can be, which can help us to track it easily, uh, which will require less time in estimation. Uh, so we went ahead and started using story count. Uh, we said, uh, so what does that mean? We said any, we will measure the progress by measuring the number of stories completed in an iteration rather than using uh, number of story points completed in an iteration. <coughs> okay. So using story count, how does that work? Uh, so what we did, we went ahead with the assumption that all stories are of the same size. Uh, how does that happen? Not, you can't have all stories are of the same size. There might be some smaller, some stories might be of, uh, of higher, some stories might be large. So how do you manage this? So what we did, we went ahead with a simple technique. We actually running a one week iteration. Uh, so what we did, we asked a dev pair uh, to check quickly if this particular story text it can be done in an iteration. If you see the answer immediately as yes, you keep it aside and move it into a product backlog. If you, if you see a dev pair saying, oh, not sure, I don't know, uh, no, then you know that that story needs to be split into multiple stories. And then you continue this exercise until you finish all your product, uh, product backlog. So what we did, we instead of asking the estimate, we just check just the guess whether you know that this story can be done or whether what's your guess in terms of completing this in an iteration. And, and it, it took uh, not more than uh, two hours for the, for, the, for the entire MVP scope. Uh, in the past, we spent at least half a day or more than a day or rather more than two days in estimating 100, 100, 100 200 stories. Uh, so, uh, so once we knew that, okay, there are like 100 stories, let's say, uh, what we ask, uh, we check how many of these can be run in parallel? So we knew that out of those 100 stories, uh, at a time we can have three parallel streams of work. Uh, so based on that, we ask a dev pair. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, all of you know Agile Velocity game, uh, where you, it's like a planning poker game. You ask people to, to find out what, what can be the t project, projected velocity for an iteration. 
So, we did the same thing, but instead of points, we asked them uh, what do you think, how many cars can be completed in an iteration, and based on that, we got the uh, projected velocity. Uh, so, we used that information and we started our iteration 1. Uh, at the end of iteration 1, we just verified whether what we said uh, in the velocity game was correct or not. So, at the end of iteration 1, <coughs> if we say, let us say we said we will complete around 9 cards in 1 week iteration, and at the end of week 1, uh, after our iteration 1, if we came around 8 to 9, uh, we went ahead with, okay, let us go ahead with 8 story count for an iteration, and using this formula, uh, we calculated how many iterations it will take to complete this entire product backlog. Uh, so, it is not a, a rocket science. We use the similar techniques what you do for story point, but instead of story point, we did use story count rather than using story point. Uh, what we did, uh, so we re-looked at the velocity uh, after uh, second iteration, after third iteration, and we adjusted our velocity accordingly. Uh, you do similar things on your when you use story points on, on any agile project. So, we did the similar thing again. <coughs> uh, and in iteration planning meeting, uh, instead of talking about how many points we should sign up, we just looked at the past uh, velocity in terms of number of cards completed and used that uh, for planning our capacity for the next iteration. Uh, if you see this, the burn up chart. Uh, so, you have seen, you must have seen this in the past where you, you have your scope over here and you, you have your projected velocity and you have your story point count, the number of story points completed in an iteration. Instead, we used a story count completed to project our velocity and also the actual velocity. <coughs> <coughs> what we did, uh, we also used something called a feature completion tracker to, to see, so if you see this, uh, we, we sh whenever the card was completed, uh, we used to show that, okay, this card is done, we cross it, and, and that helped us to show, give a single view of where are we standing in terms of MVP scope, how many cards are done, how many cards are not done. So, there was no, there was no any other uh, metric that we use apart from the story count. So, just the burn up chart and, and using this uh, feature completion tracker uh, to show, just a giving a single view for the product owner on, on where we stand today in terms of the MVP scope. <coughs> how it <coughs> how it helped uh, so it did help uh, if you look at uh, uh, what I said in the past uh, in 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 this case uh, because we were using count we were not using we were not using story point uh, we don't have to worry about uh, metrics and then and then converting and and making sure that each story has a, a story point and and then using that story point to track our project progress and all of that stuff. Instead, we focused ourselves uh, in the IPM to IPM is like in the iteration planning meeting to talk about uh, what the business value that we're getting from this particular story, and talk about how and 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 helping everyone to uh, to have a shared understanding of what we are building and how we are building, rather than worrying about okay why this is a one pointer, why this is a two pointer, why this is a three pointer. So we we removed all that discussion and rather focused on on making sure that everyone understands what we are doing. And that helped us in, in, in when we started working on that particular story because people had a lot of understanding about, about what they are doing, how they are doing. <coughs> uh, definitely it helped for project manager because you do not have to worry about how to track, okay, the story point, that particular story does not have an estimate. Can we go get the estimate? We missed out estimating one or two stories. You do not have to do that. You just have to calculate the story card. Uh, and, and based on that, you can just plan your, plan your scope. Uh, so no, don't, no one had to go back and relook at, uh, okay, 50 point. Uh, this is this is these are totals around 50 points. What should we do? How should we handle it? Uh, we just use the count, and that helped us. That resolved a lot of complications and issues that we faced in the past. Uh, we also were able to quickly handle any change in scope or change in requirements. Uh, and and uh, better way to track change in scope. So if you see uh, when we use story point, you have seen the issue where. If the scope changes, there is a tendency to either accommodate that sco scope in the story itself or you end up bumping up the story point. Rather, we and, and then you lose the track of where the scope change happened. Here, you end up creating a new card and that that is the easy way for you to track uh, how much scope has changed from initial uh, product, initial whenever, whenever you did the initial, when you had the initial understanding of your product. And, and it helped us because we 
we were tracking it continuously without worrying about this story is not estimated. We need to go into the estimation session again because we have more understanding of the product. We just ended up creating more stories when we had more understanding of that product. <coughs> uh, more focus on completing stories which give higher business value instead of uh, having a quick gain in story points. So I have seen tendency in, in project managers or in the team uh, to pick up stories which will help you to get a better velocity. Rather because every story was same, every story there was no story point against the story, ca story card. What we did, we just looked at what, what story will give us the better business value or higher business value and we picked up those cards first rather than focusing on which story will give me uh, higher story points at the end of this iteration. Uh, so that helped us. Uh, in my mind, if you, if you look at uh, uh, how it worked, uh, it worked, it, it will probably work for, uh, this is just an experiment that we started. We did it for one or two projects in the past. I would like to continue going forward, uh, but it, from what I understood that it will probably work if you have more than four or five iterations in your project. You need to have a lot of trust between the product owner and the development team. In case you don't have, uh, my suggestion would be to uh, start with estimating the first release and then eventually you can build that trust and then start from, eval uh, you can uh, probably evolve your estimation process right from story points to relative sizing to story count. Uh, we also did, uh, also use something called cycle time uh, to find out uh, what are the bottlenecks in the project and how our work is evolved, is process, is flowing through uh, the development process as such. And, and use the cycle time analysis to find out uh, how can we improve the overall process as such and reduce the development cycle. Uh, so so it, it helped us. Uh, in a way I will say that uh, if you uh, you should stop wasting time trying to estimate a never ending backlog. Uh, there's no evidence that will help you uh, better than counting just story, but just better than just using the story count uh, uh, for the number of stories completed in an iteration. <coughs> Questions? see that kind of a, uh, you know, behavior, I mean, uh, is there a value in not the numbers, but, you know, as a communication tool to kind of uh, so know, as I said, bridge the differences? I agree, yeah, as I said, that we did not remove that discussion. The discussion was still there, uh, but discussion wasn't more around why it's a one pointer, why I think it's a two pointer, why we just talked about what are the better approaches to build this functionality, what are we building, how are we building it, and why are we building it. So the discussion was more focused on, on delivering the value to the business rather than around estimation why it's one point, two point, and all of that stuff. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, you can, <coughs> uh, so when we, uh, we actually typically in, th in ThoughtWorks, what we do is uh, we do an inception uh, before start of the project. So you come up with uh, some stories and then eventually as you move on, you end up creating more stories when you get more information about a product. Uh, so you can, you can create those, you can split those stories either before the iteration or you can do that in the, in the iteration planning meeting itself. It's not necessarily that you have to do it before. <coughs> Uh, the same size and things like that. Uh, because if you, even if you have to break it down to an extent that you can go to the week and stuff, it typically becomes a task which is eight hours, ten hours task, or whatever it needs to be. So, was that stories eventually looking like? Were the stories looking like tasks, or the stories were really stories which had a clear criteria of acceptance, the definition of done and stuff like that? Um, all of them were stories. Uh, there were no task as such. Uh, we have like I've been. We've been using one week for an iteration almost for, I've, I've used it for almost like three to four years now. And uh, even when we were using story point, uh, it's the same, the, the, that, that problem can occur even for the story points as well, right? So it, all of those were stories, not, not tasks. Story 
So while there is a lot of value in doing that, when uh, what is the value in getting the business out of it? When you break the stories, you also have to keep the business value which that particular story is going to tell you about. That so problem can occur you, even when you story like eventually you pick you try to pick up stories which can be done in, in an iteration and you end up splitting those stories so when you split you need to make sure that as a ba uh, that you are not uh, not compromising on the business value you are doing what uh, there's like not using story point there's no challenge like it's it, the challenge is same whether you use story point or whether you use story count it doesn't doesn't change as such You are doing story point estimations, right? And then you move to uh, non-story point estimations, but you started splitting the stories into smaller ones so that no, 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 I didn't say that. Uh, we never we use big stories. We did. We had to split those stories because if you uh, what you do in an iteration, you you pick up stories which can you can be done in an iteration, right? So you had to if there are a lot of if there are a lot of bigger stories, you have to split those and make sure that we have stories which can be done in an iteration. If you end up picking up stories which are big and can't be done in an iteration, you carry it forward to the next iteration and it just goes on. So the whether or not you use story point, the, the idea, idea should be that you should split stories and make sure that that story should be completed in an iteration. But here, one of your effort goes into, <coughs> mean, of your effort goes into ensuring that stories are of See. approximately equal size. Not really. So, uh, how can you say that, you know, Say that you know if I finish ten stories in sprint one, and I finish only two stories in sprint two, that would not be the case. Sir, in your case, approximately the number of stories <coughs> so should be approximately the same. Yes, there will be differences. I'm not saying all stories have to be same, uh, but the difference will even out over a period of time. It's not that. So even initially, probably you'll have some hiccups, but over a period of time, the difference will go out, go away. Uh, and and. Uh, my 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 technique for using or splitting the stories was just get a quick guess. If you get a quick answer from the development team that yes, it can be done in iteration. If they think, if they say not sure, don't know, that means you have a scope to to probably uh, break down that story further. I mean, to deliver the entire story, right, or just the development part of it? To deliver the entire story end to end, right? To deliver it, like test it, and then deploy it to production. <coughs> developer whether you can take this user story in this script or not and then you pushed some user stories uh, for breaking them up yeah did it happen because of this did it happen that you had some complex user stories or which uh, you know big user stories left for the end because some stories are very difficult like you cannot break them down they are big user stories so so in, in Yes, if some stories which you can't break, you need more information before you break, right? So you just keep it aside and you you highlight it to the product owner that we need some information. So what we do, if we know if we know that there's a big story, we don't don't have a lot of information. You put a number saying it's a 10 point or 20 point, but eventually that that's gonna change. So we just kept it aside. We said okay, we don't have any enough information. Probably in a week or two, we'll get more details and we'll try and break this further. Uh, so instead of putting a calling it as an epic. We kept it aside. We knew that it's it's something that we had to work upon, but we did that uh, in in a, by doing some analysis or investigation and and finding out okay whether we need to split this, how can we split this, and all of that stuff. So that means you need to start with the analysis initiative right? okay. if you want to split that. So in that case, we'll not be able to split. And if it is of same priority, then it would not, uh, uh, like, uh, I mean, it would not uh, give the proper picture, right? It would be still big so that we could have completed only one story card because we were not able to split. Uh, not really. Like, we, I had like two such stories which were like epic, and and then uh, when we knew that, okay, we can't, we can't, we don't know uh, how to split this. So we spend some time, not more. Like we, you do that whether you use story point or whether you use story count. If you know that it's a epic, it's a 20 pointer. That means you need some more effort to investigate and break it down further. So it doesn't matter whether, like, it doesn't change much as as from like using story count as an as a technique rather than using story point. That challenge even will be there for comparing like every one story point yep. uh, story will not. Story. 
not analysis. We knew we know that okay, that story needs to be split further, and we just kept it aside. And then it come it come back again. Uh, it can come back again after once you split it further. Then you can you can then again uh, ask that question, same question to the development team, and check if now do you think these multiple stories can be done? Like each of these can be done in an iteration. If they say no, then again you need to split it further. Cannot be taken in this spread. Yeah. So the same thing you are doing it with this approach as well. There's nothing different. Yeah. Uh, the question here is, uh, sorry, it's related questions. Uh, what's the size of the team that you have? Generally, very good. Uh, I had three dev pairs for around uh, six people, dev developers, development, and like uh, one QA and. Or will it be a collective decision? Yes, we can do it in one week. So we ask. Uh, it depends. You can ask the entire team, uh, but do not waste everyone else's time. We typically pick up like we ask two developers uh, to to just check and and tell us whether it's possible. But this is so the discussion for the discussion around how should we do it, what should we do it. That discussion you need to have entire team over there just to check whether it can be done or not. In an iteration, you don't need entire team. You can have one pair or two dev pairs sitting and and just confirming. Experienced person. Yeah. Kind of. okay. The other question just related to it is, uh, so if there are four people, and uh, so how do you plan for that one week? So you say that if one person says I can do one story in one day, and no, I we don't do day wise thing, right? So once you start working, so you you must be you know having some bold part figure in mind that after one week of split we would have so many story so cards done. We did the same uh, agile velocity game where we asked them look at these cards, tell uh, pick up cards which can be done in an iteration. So people went out and picked up some cards and and we asked them uh, we did it multiple times and then on an average we calculated how many cards they think uh, can be done in an iteration and use that as an input for the first iteration. And then whatever the actual velocity that came out of the first iteration, we just ref we just refined it and then used it going forward. Uh, I still have a developer and a, a tester and, and a test automation guy for Bubbly committed to the one new story. So in, that, in this case, do you break it down further the story into the task? How, how does this scenario work? It's up to the development team how they want to do it. Uh, I'm just talking in terms of the planning, how we plan, uh, whether you, how you develop, you can, you have, everyone has a different approach to develop story, right? They can, they might want to break it down into smaller tasks and handle the task each day, or whether you want to do it, uh, discuss it initially, and then just get started. So the development team has different approaches on how they want to do it. So this is just a, this is just an estimate. Like we're just saying that okay, we will probably be able to complete this. There's no commitment as such. We are just saying this is the indication. You can't just hold someone responsible that because you did not complete this, why did you not complete this? Can you tell us why what happened? So just an indication. It, it should not be con considered as a uh, commitment from the development team that they will they should complete at least five stories per iteration. Actually, this is uh, no different from the story point to story Yes. We are just saying that uh, my limit is one story point and you are replacing the story count. Is it something like that? Uh, we can we can do it that way as well. It's not uh, if you want to if you want to do it that way, it's fine. As long as you you, you don't spend time in, in estimation, uh, it should be fine whether you use small count or whether you use small count. So yeah, I have published this report, experience report on the site. So if you want to read it further, you can definitely go and read it on the